Hi, everybody. Welcome to our Wealth Builder series. Uh, we are going to cover some things that are pretty exciting today. And for those of you who don't know, I'm Pam Kruger. I'm the founder and the CEO of WealthRamp and also the co-host of Friends Talk Money. It's a podcast on PBS Next Avenue. Now, for anybody who doesn't know, WealthRamp is where you go when you're looking for the right fiduciary financial advisor. These are advisors who work only and directly for you. They don't work as sales reps for brokerage firms or insurance companies. And that means the advice you get is straight from the decision makers. So WealthRamp is the go-to resource. Um, and we are the only platform that will connect you with vetted fiduciary fee-only advisors where we don't share your information, not even with the advisors, until you tell us that you are ready to talk to that advisor. So we're gonna dive in. Today, we want to continue helping you not only sail through tax season, but also take things in context with your overall investment strategy, especially if you've been one of the millions of people to invest and decide to get involved with crypto or, or Bitcoin uh, or any kind of crypto investments or assets of any kind. Um, there are you know, literally like 20 million people who are investing in crypto now and the marketplace as a whole for crypto assets is now beyond $2 trillion. So it's not like anybody has been doing this forever, um, but we're gonna help you understand, especially knowing that we're going into tax season, what to do and what not to do as far as your taxes. So we're talking investments and we're talking strategy specifically around crypto and how that relates to the rest of your investment portfolio and taxes. So we're gonna dive in because you guys have asked me on many occasions, we wanna hear from your advisors directly, Pam. And I hear that. So that's why today I've asked Jeff George, he's our uh, guest expert for today because Jeff's a chartered financial analyst who advises individual investors and especially entrepreneurs and small business owners. Um, before founding Tao, which is his firm, Jeff was advising on $2 billion in corporate and retirement plan assets, such as 401ks and pension plans. So we have our own chef in the kitchen, our own chief investment officer and advisor right here. So Jeff, I'm really happy that you could join us today. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm flattered um, and good to be here. So... So yeah, let's kind of set the stage. Um, a lot of us own stocks, of course. Some people have become owners, especially as you know, 2021 was a record year for a lot of cryptocurrencies. So a lot of people decided to jump in and they do it in different ways for different reasons. Some are buyers, um, like myself, who look at the investment as long-term and others are in and out and in and out. So as we've been watching these assets go on this big roller coaster ride, especially in light of world events and, and all of that, um, higher inflation, higher interest rates, um, knowing we don't help know how crypto assets will ever behave as a hedge in terms of a portfolio, how do you see these world events, uh, geopolitical events that have, uh, of late impacting the entire crypto market? And you know maybe just the overall um, way that you look at portfolios that can, that uh, include crypto assets. I mean, you could look at it from a couple of perspectives. So one would be the for just purely from an investment risk standpoint, and you know what we saw back in uh, really over the last couple of months is that you know crypto is is not yet defined itself as so it's it's operated pretty well as an inflation hedge what we've seen so far uh we don't know that for sure you know indefinitely but it has um it has a has developed a relatively high correlation to tech stocks um and i think that that is in a sense reflective of who's been investing in crypto um because it is you know more of a speculative mindset of you know i'm willing to take this risk i want to get the larger return um so there may be some some underlying similarities based on the 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 kind of investor base that has participated up until this point. Um, but, you know, if, if we see, you know, more market volatility, crypto is probably going to be trading in line. It might behave somewhat differently, but it, but it could very well continue behaving somewhat like tech stocks. So, you know, it behaves 
uh, well as an inflation hedge and, and does have different properties, but um, really the, the market has to mature to see what it does next based on who the new participants are. So I think as we get more institutional buyers, which we're starting to see, um, as we start to see more, you know, mom and pops, um, you know, long-term investors like yourself, Pam, that are seeing it more as a diversifier in their portfolio, they become more so. Um, the, the geopolitical side is really interesting because I was just um, reflecting on this with a friend of mine, but the probably one of the biggest risks that we see or that I see with cryptocurrency is regulatory risk. Um, you know, so what are the governments of the world going to do if they perceive cryptocurrency as a conduit for capital flight? Um, as you see countries going away from a globalized system to possibly a multipolar or decentralized system, um, the countries are going to have a natural incentive to keep capital locked within the country. And, and very likely regulations will be coming out at some point in the future if it continues you know, in a, in a not-so-friendly fashion with Russia and other countries, that they're going to start seeing this as a, a threat to their domestic economy, um, to their, their capital safety or the, you know, their country solvency. Um, and so you very well could see regulations coming out that are, that are going after exchanges that aren't implementing know your client rules, that aren't you know, providing the necessary reporting to the regulators, uh, to the IRS. And so you know, it is very important that investors understand where they're, they're accessing these markets. Yeah, because if there are restrictions and there are more regulations, which seem kind of the natural evolution, then for you with clients who have um, you know, maybe a small, infinitesimally small, like when I speak about myself as an investor, that I'm not going to paint myself as a crypto investor. This is me just basically wanting to own a, a tiny bit. So maybe 1% of the, mm -hmm. value of the value of my entire portfolio, I might be willing to say, I really believe in this and so forth. But with, with more restrict, more restriction possibilities, then what do you see for clients um, who are serious crypto investors and what does that mean for you as far as positioning for that? Does that make you reset your strategy today or does that make you just say, these are the things that I want to be aware of. We don't know the impact yet. Um, you know, how do you prepare for what you see coming next? Firstly, I'll say it depends on the investor. Um, so for the DIYers, uh, that I do have some clients that, that have that approach. Um, I tend to focus more on just educating them about what the risks are, um, you know, kind of helping them to understand that, yeah, maybe you've gotten away with buying and selling these, these cryptos and you haven't reported anything to the IRS. You know, I can't help with that. You know, you, you, you need to basically talk to your CPA, start reporting these things because um, you don't want it to come out many years later that this information was known and you didn't provide it. And by the way, you owe these taxes and plus a couple of years worth of penalties. Um, and, you know, the, the premise that, that it's attractive purely from a nobody gets to know what I'm doing standpoint, um, that's, that's not going to last forever because anything that, that removes the government's ability to, you know, prohibit money laundering or anything like that is going to eventually fall under scrutiny. Um, seeing it as a diversifier, though, as an opportunity to add different types of risk into a portfolio. Um, I don't think that that's necessarily going anywhere. You know, I think that right, you know, that's right. probably going to go the opposite direction. You know, we, we now have um, two closed ended funds that I know of probably more um, that are, that are diversified, you know, index like uh, strategies to invest in cryptocurrency. We're going to see more of those. And I think that fee compression and those strategies is going to really make it to where they're more affordable right now. It's like, you know, two, two and a half percent. That's pretty high. Um, but as we get like a Fidelity or a Vanguard or a Schwab or some of these other major players that realize, okay, yeah, well, the traditional a, players, but yeah, they're going to be able to do it much more efficiently. And I think that that's going to make it to where you can have that type of a diversification instead of a traditional investment portfolio um, mm. in a more cost effective way. So in that sense, right. I think it's really a good thing. No, I, I would never think of my Bitcoin and Ethereum as being a, a hedge against inflation knowing that we've got these brand new headwinds of you know, rising interest rates at the same time, just in inflation that just won't stop. And looking at, looking at inflation, like you said, it could be an inflation, it could be, it could be that crypto works as an inflation hedge, but 
not to be confused with a market strategy hedge against um, stock market drops. Like people think right. of gold, you know, and they think of they think of hard assets, real estate. You know, they think of oh, I want to run into hard assets when the stock market drops because you know that really is not a good feeling. So yeah. in this case, for me anyway. And I'm and I'm wondering how you see this. Um, I don't see um, crypto as the be all end all answer for the hedge when you know the market falls. No, 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 no. It very likely could be the opposite. Um, at least in the in the interim. Um, yeah. You know, long term, it, it it will behave differently over time. We can get into some of that if you're curious. But but uh, in the interest of answering your specific question. Um, What's really kind of been the, 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 I guess, the prevailing thought among many experts that I follow has been that, you know, Bitcoin has now kind of it's positioned itself, at least more recently, as the the uh, risk on inflation hedge, whereas, you know, gold, the traditional hard assets are the risk off inflation hedge. So if you see a market decline and you're dealing with with inflation, well, then you, you want something tangible that you can hold on to. If That's if, the gold. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's the stock market hedge, but the but the but the other risk well, of inflation, things like that, yeah. right, right. But crypto not being a hard asset mm -hmm. um, isn't categorized that way. But in your mind, you think of it as 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 far as the experience goes that we have so far, right? I mean, none well, of us have been doing this for twenty years. Yeah, it's it's parity, right? So I guess like it depends on what kind of inflation you're talking about. Like if it's a demand side inflation. Um, which is not really what this is only we've only seen this really right. since you know, 2021 uh, um, demand side inflation. You look at hard assets and you'd say, well, you know, I want something that's tangible that's going to retain value because other people are going to want it just as much as I already want it. And then I already have it. Um, if you're looking at it from like a, a monetary expansion standpoint. So if, if you know, we keep seeing the Fed printing significant funds you know, over time, well, then all of a sudden, maybe cryptocurrency can be an inflation hedge because um, you know, you're, you're effectively seeing dollar debasement and, and investors looking at it from the outside are going to go, well, then kind of what's the difference? If, if yep. it's going to go up at the same rate or faster, then the value of my dollar is declining. Right, maybe right. It's, worth holding. it's just another tool on the shelf. Um, and I mean, this is not an area yeah. that um, there are experts who even the most expert of experts of which you are an expert in crypto and I am not. But we're all on a learning curve together. Now, what makes things even more complex in addition to geopolitical and all the inflation that we're seeing and so forth in the economy and all of these things are things we cannot control. But what we can control is making sure that we don't get flagged by the IRS as we sail into tax season here. And you know, if you bought, if you traded, if you sold, any cryptocurrencies whatsoever. Um, Jeff, what do we absolutely need to know about taxes um, on crypto assets? The best guidance that I've heard and, and what, what the IRS has released up until this point in time says cryptocurrency is property. Um, so now understanding that there is a difference between property and security. So, so and it's mainly regulatory at this point, but it's property, which means um, if you buy and sell it, you can have a long-term or uh, short-term capital gain. Um, if you receive it in, in compensation in any way, that's income. When you later sell it, you then potentially also have a capital gain. Um, what has not, something that's actually been very advantageous to crypto traders in particular up until really just last year um, has been that, so w when we issued our article that we had talked about recently, um, it, we talked about the, the potential for a wash sale rule. So that's something that has now been um, put out in the infrastructure bill as a proposal. Um, and it's something that's being given significantly more interest uh, by Congress and, and various lawmakers. So as early as this year, we could see the implementation of a wash sale rule for cryptocurrencies that, that people who previously would have been able to do tax loss harvesting are not going to have that option. And those losses may actually be disallowed in the future. So um, it, it's, it's a, a rapidly changing regulatory framework. And even just from one year to the next, people who are actively engaging in trading and investing in cryptocurrency um, need to be aware that those rules are not static. They are, they are under development. They're constantly under development. Because it is ever-changing. It is so dynamic. 
So there's, I, I would say what I've been reading and what you're saying is, you know, there's general guidance that surrounds stocks and investments in property when it comes to the IRS. It feels like so far, those same baseline ground rules apply to crypto. But I think that in the reporting, there's, there's language that says, you know, did you receive crypto? Now, I hate forms. I am form phobia. I freeze up. And I look at that and I say, well, wait a minute, did I receive it? So, so I think that one thing that could be clarified for the general guidelines is it's, and you tell me if I'm right, if I bought crypto with my own money, with dollars, didn't trade it, didn't get it from mining it or earning it another way, then I don't have to report it. Is that correct? If I'm just an investor who's bought it with my own dollars. So when that question comes up on the forum that says, did you receive crypto? It's like, oh, I did, but I bought it. So is that a distinction that should be? I, I, think, it, I think it probably would qualify as a yes. Um, it, it, now, I, if I, so if, if it were me, I would check the box, yes. And, and that it may not have created a taxable okay. event. So, it, so it, it may not be something where you actually have income from it, um, you know, but, but, but you took possession of crypto. And in my mind, you're not going to hurt yourself by checking that box if, if you can demonstrate that you had no income from sale. Um, and ultimately, you're going to have to check the box whenever you end up selling it or if you ever end up staking it and collecting income from it, because all of those things are, are going to build on that initial check the box election. So okay. So in my so mind, the you might rule... as well just do it. If you, if you own it, you might as well check it because it's going to affect you in some way. Okay. Some okay. So, so yeah. when it comes to the reporting of it, let's, let's be really clear, you know, go ahead and be transparent and report it and air to that side, because if you don't, I was reading um, some articles from the IRS about, you know, using the word like tax, using the phrase tax fraud and, oh, yeah. and those kinds of like punishable offenses that I don't want to be involved in. So I think a lot of people know that, but let's talk about other crypto taxable situations. Um, just get, just kind of run me through the things that you see with your clients that you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're saying, ah, flag this, flag that, make sure. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so staking is one that is becoming more and more popular, and that's that's it's interesting because you know having come from the finance industry, you see some of the ways that these these transactions are taking place, and you go, well, that's not really not not that much different than you know say securities lending, or you know so so there's there's parallels, um, and in this case, it's, you're you're collecting interest in the form of more crypto. So in that sense, you you would it'd be the same as if you received a payment in crypto. Let's, let, let's take it apart just for a quick second. So, yeah. so when we, we talk, I mentioned the word mining, which is kind of a way of earning, oh, you know, yeah. say Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. But what about staking? Can you just go back and roll roll back for a second to yeah. kind of de define what we mean by staking? Effectively, what someone's doing when they're staking is they're taking cryptocurrency that is that is theirs. Um, they own it, and they are placing it as collateral effectively to then collect interest. And that's why I had joked, it's a little bit similar to securities lending. So, you know, if you own a portfolio of stocks and you say, well, I've got a bunch of Tesla and somebody wants to, to borrow my Tesla to go short the market, you know, I can lend them my Tesla to short the market and I collect an interest rate on that. Um, it's a very similar idea, at least that, you know, you're, you're providing what you own for a period of time, you're you're basically locking it in to where you would not you would neither sell it or you know move it anyway. And in exchange, you receive a rate of interest. Um, that rate of interest is what they're referring to as staking. But the, the difference is instead of receiving cash compensation, you're receiving tokens as compensation. So so not reporting any of these to the IRS is a huge no-no. But mm -hmm. how do you report? How do you report that? Uh, on, on the income. tax form, mm -hmm. ordinary okay. income, and then okay. and then at some point, when you choose to sell it later on, it would be a gain. Um, right. And if if you're you're smart about it, you're going to start tracking your tax losses so, or tax tax uh, lots. I apologize. Um, so that when you end up reporting that, you can actually break down which lots they are, and you may have some discretion over which ones you sell. Okay. So clearly, any transactions that you're making. You know, buying, owning, investing, trading, selling, staking, mining, report it. Air mm -hmm. to the side because non-compliance is 
not going to end well. No. <laughs> so, okay. Um, and, and obviously this stuff gets really complex, really fast. So I'm just trying to stick with, with what people kind of need to know sure. for, for, yeah. you know, this tax season and, and just kind of understanding and people know why they're investing or why they're buying. Well, maybe some people don't know. they just want to be in it because it's fun to be in it. Um, I mean, I actually yeah. have to admit, I probably put myself in that category um, a little bit. Um, so as far as help that's out there, and you know some of the online tools that are out there that you have used or that you see the uh, DIY uh, um, investors using, what's out there that can help people make sense of all this? Yeah, um, so, so two in particular that, that I've seen and, and seem to be you know, nice products. There's one that's uh, uh, like it's cryptotrader.tax. So that's, that's one service out there. But uh, another thing is Zenledger. And there's more now. There, I mean, there's, there's a, a handful of them. But um, effectively what they do is they let you, uh, in, in a mint-like fashion, link up your crypto accounts to a service that helps you to track your, your lots. So if you're holding a variety of cryptocurrency positions, you've bought and sold them throughout the years, um, you get to effectively know, well, what, um, what are my tax lots? When did I buy this? Is this a short-term gain? Is this a long-term gain? Short-term loss, long-term loss. Um, it helps you with netting out trades, and things of that like that. Uh, ultimately your CPA will need, or if you're preparing your own tax return, you're gonna need um, to report to the IRS. And so that really helps to simplify that process. Um, and it helps to provide some insight, you know, for those that do want to engage in tax loss harvesting or some way. Um, okay, but what are the, okay, then what are the shortfalls? Because every time I vet an online tool, I always make a list of, okay, these are the things that I know that work really well and really fast and efficient to help me, um, especially in this case with crypto, you know, kind of figure things out. And then there are other things that these um, services and online exchanges don't provide? Like how much can we rely on and where do we not want to get caught relying or depending upon those tools or those, or those exchanges well, for reliable I, yeah. information, especially yeah. for taxes? Sure. So, so they're not a substitute for tax advice. Um, so you know, it, it, it's a means to an end. It might help to save your accountants some time. Um, the way they present that information may not be what they would recommend for you. So, you know, it's going to present, you know, a user with a lot of options for how they can report their taxes. It's not necessarily going to tell them what the most advantageous way to do it is based on their circumstances. Um, and also, the, I would say that the further you get out into the fringe, so if you're self-custodying your own currency and you're working on a decentralized exchange or you're, you're operating in, in some, you know, pretty far out, method of you know applying the, the cryptocurrency investing you know for a lot of, of ordinary traders or people or not ordinary but, but traders that are more used to the exchanges um, you may not have the resources to connect your portfolios or your wallet with a tool like this and it really does fall on you to understand how all that works i always think of it as it wants to hit the help button mm -hmm. right when they need it and and they really need to go beyond what's available, either the information through the exchange, what they provide and rely on that, or whether it be some kind of online organizing tool. What if they need real help and real advice? The question is that we've got taxes combined with investment strategy advice. I don't feel comfortable. Don't tell my CPA, he's a good friend. I don't feel comfortable taking my entire portfolio with all my tax questions, especially around crypto and dumping them on his desk. So where do people turn in terms of, I'm not trying to do a giant commercial for you. I'm trying to say, where do people go to find this really unique combination of expertise? And second part B to that question is, give me an example of what you do with your clients who come in who have crypto. Just give me a quick, real life example of a real client, but, but where do people go when they need the tax and the investment advice? Well, I've got CPAs I work with that, 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 okay. will, that, that are really digging into this and getting to understand the cryptocurrency market and what, what goes into the reporting. Um, and they're even leveraging some of these resources, these online resources, because 
um, the, these service providers have gotten smart and have realized, hey, you know, we don't just need to give this to, to people that are doing their own taxes and, and doing their own trading. We need to leverage this for the practitioners. And so there's actually practitioner versions of these resources that the CPAs themselves I bet. Use, I bet. which is great. I mean, I, I recommend that to every CPA I come across that has clients with crypto and um, it, it makes their life easier. And so, so there's, there's ways to collaborate. Um, it definitely is, it takes a village right now, um, partially just because crypto has moved so fast that there's, I mean, the learning curve is steep and, um, you know, a lot of very experienced advisors, a lot of very experienced CPAs. It's just, it's, it's, it's a completely new world. Alongside when we post this video, I'm going to have a couple of questions that came uh, as emails um, from people uh, wanted, wanted to know about a Roth IRA with crypto. The other wanted to know how, how to invest in different types of crypto. So mm -hmm. I want to invite the conversation to continue by emailing me directly at, 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 at email me at askpam at wealthramp.com. And Jeff, I want to thank you so much. I, I, I promised we'd have, we kind of keep this contained, but there's so much to know, but I'm really happy that we got to cover um, the really important pieces of what not to do this tax season. The answer is report, report, report. And of course, you, you'll find Jeff George as one of our advisors in our network. These are advisors I have personally vetted myself. So come to us with your questions and we look forward to continuing this conversation. And Jeff, thanks a lot for taking the time today. My pleasure.